The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. CHP says a driver trying to pass another on Highway 46 this morning was killed, shutting down the road for hours. An update the, on the investigation and traffic coming up. The future of a local nursing home notorious for its poor handling of the coronavirus pandemic is uncertain. What residents at Kingston Healthcare are being told. And President Joe Biden approves the deployment of additional U.S. military troops to Eastern Europe near Ukraine as tensions continue to intensify. The latest move from Russia on this Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022. And good afternoon. Thanks for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Maddie Jansen. We begin with some breaking news in Northeast Bakersfield. House fire happening right now and causing some congestion in the area. The fire is in the 2000 block of North Kern Street, just east of Alta Vista Drive. You are advised to avoid the area. Bakersfield firefighters are still on the scene working to get this fire under control. Uh, nearby streets there are blocked off. The house actually just collapsed minutes ago. Uh, they've been working on this fire since about 11 this morning. Again, this is uh, at the 2000 block of North Kern Street. It's just east of Alta Vista Drive. So avoid that area if you can. And if you see smoke in that area, that's what's causing it. You can download our 17 News uh, app to get the latest on breaking news like this sent directly to your phone. 46 just reopened after a deadly crash involving four vehicles this morning. It happened around 6.15 a.m. on the 46 between Poplar and Route Avenues. CHP says the driver of a silver Lexus was headed east at a high rate of speed when it tried to pass a slower vehicle in front of it and crashed head on into a semi truck. The Lexus then struck the vehicle the driver was initially trying to pass. The big rig was carrying a load of hay, which spilled, hitting a fourth vehicle. The Lexus caught fire and the driver was killed. No one else was hurt. As of last check, the road was uh, had just reopened. And now to the latest update on COVID-19 in Kern County. The most recent data from public health shows the virus uh, spread is slowing. Public health announced another 1,240 people have tested positive for the virus. No new deaths were announced. Our hospital saw a significant drop in patients hospitalized with the virus. 287 people are in local hospitals currently with the virus. That's 31 fewer than yesterday. 50 more are fighting for their lives in ICUs. Data shows 90% of hospitalizations are in people who are unvaccinated. An update now on a story we first brought you this morning on 17 News at Sunrise. The future of Kingston Healthcare Center is in jeopardy as it is set to lose its status as a nursing facility. 17 News has obtained a letter from the Department of Health and Human Services saying Medicare and Medicaid will no longer provide funding to Kingston Healthcare. It also says it will no longer be recognized as a nursing facility. The reason? Multiple violations, including failing to maintain adequate quality of life and proper infection control. The notice says the agreement between Medicare and Medicaid will be terminated on Sunday. Although it does not mean the facility will necessarily shut down on that day, local experts say it's unlikely the facility will have any other choice but to close. Kingston is the worst rated nursing facility in Kern County, according to Medicare reports. Its overall score is so low, a rating of much below average is too generous. Medicare reports say the facility has a history of persistent poor quality of care. At the beginning of the pandemic, COVID ravaged this home. More than 100 residents tested positive in the 184 bed facility. 19 died. We reached out to Kingston this morning about the notice. They say they can't provide any information. 17's Alex Fisher will have a full report on the future of the facility coming up tonight at 5. Hello, this is Tim Callahan with Clinica Sierra Vista, and we're excited to unveil the Community Health Center of the Future, our comprehensive care center. It's located right across the street from Memorial Hospital. We have every service under one roof, from family medicine, OBGYN care, dental services for adults and children, behavioral health, and much more. So find your way to better care at Clinica Sierra Vista this year at our comprehensive care center. Visit our website, clinicasierravista.org, for the latest on this project. 17 Court Watch now. A teenager who shot and killed two people in 2020 was sentenced today, just days after escaping from Juvenile Hall. Dequante Cage, now 16, killed two people he believed were rival gang members in late 2020. Cage was awaiting sentencing when the sheriff's office says he escaped this weekend. He was caught hours later. Cage was ordered held in custody until he's 25 years old. 
The trial for a man accused of sexually abusing a girl when she was 15 was slated to begin today, but was yet again postponed. Miguel Acosta Castillo Jr., who'd been scheduled for trial last week, was due back in court today. Hundreds of emails were sent out to public officials and media organizations earlier this month saying the victim, Kari Walton, has been delayed justice due to repeated trial delays. Assistant District Attorney Joseph Kinzel told 17 News the trial has been postponed 12 times at the request of a defense attorney. Castillo is charged with eight felonies in connection with the alleged abuse. The trial is now set to begin next Tuesday. Alan Thomas Rockwell, the former owner of the iconic Oildale bar Trouts, has been convicted of 17 felonies in connection with a scheme to steal tens of thousands of dollars from a disabled uncle. In 2018, Rockwell's uncle was hospitalized and agreed to give Rockwell power of attorney to handle his finances. The uncle moved in with Rockwell shortly after. Prosecutors say an agreement was made where Rockwell collected a set amount of money per month to provide care for his uncle, who eventually grew suspicious when Rockwell wouldn't give him access to financial records. The uncle discovered tens of thousands of dollars missing from his account. Thomas Rockwell is set to be sentenced February 25th. On the agenda for the Bakersfield City Council this afternoon, discussion about implementing a directive from the State Department of Justice. It's part of its civil rights settlement with the Bakersfield Police Department. The DOJ says the city must prepare a proposed charter amendment for the November 2022 general election, asking voters to allow the appointment of a person from an agency outside the BPD for the police chief position. Currently, the city's police chief must be hired from within the BPD's own ranks. Placing the question on the November ballot would cost the city about $100,000. This debate is separate from, but somewhat connected to, Councilman Chris Parlier's proposal to form a Charter Review Committee to address other possible changes to the Charter. City Council members are also expected to appoint nine residents to serve on the Public Safety and Vital Services Measure uh, Citizens Oversight Committee. 22 people applied during the three-year term. Committee members will review revenue generated by Measure N and make spending recommendations. 17 Crime Watch now. A man and woman arrested after their one-year-old child was found dead in a Lake Isabella home are out of custody. Investigators saying the case needs more investigation before deciding whether to press charges. 27-year-old Ashley Sethel and 29-year-old Jeffrey Sullins were arrested Saturday on suspicion of felony child endangerment. Deputies had responded to a call of a child not breathing, but by the time they arrived, the sheriff's office says the one-year-old had already passed away. World News Now, President Joe Biden has approved the deployment of additional U.S. military troops to Eastern Europe near Ukraine. As diplomatic efforts to avert a war continue, Russian President Vladimir Putin said West has ignored Russia's key demands in Ukraine standoff. NBC's Richard Engel reports from Eastern Ukraine. Here in Mariupol, which is not very far from the Russian border, people are starting to prepare for the possibility that Russia might invade. There's not a panic here. The government is urging calm, and you don't see uh, any frenzied activity on the streets. People aren't running in for bomb shelters or closing up their shops. But they are starting in greater numbers to join the volunteer civil defense services so that they can learn first aid, sign up in case they need to be issued a weapon and defend uh, their houses and their families. What's making people nervous is clearly the 130,000 Russian troops that are positioned are around the borders of this country. Uh, in particular, those forces are being uh, reinforced right now in Belarus, which is to the north of, uh, of Ukraine, within striking distance of the capital, Kiev, and comments by Russian President Vladimir Putin overnight. He is sticking with his demand that Ukraine never be allowed to join NATO and that NATO shrink, that it shed off parts of Eastern Europe and shed countries in the Baltic. Both of these demands have already been rejected by the United States, already been rejected by NATO. Yet Putin hasn't changed his position one inch, which suggests that all the diplomacy that we've been seeing over the last several weeks shuttle visits to Europe, video calls, secure conferences, haven't achieved very much, certainly haven't convinced Vladimir Putin to change his negotiating stance. And that, that stance, the wide gaps between the U.S. and uh, Russia and the looming presence of the troops means people here are starting to prepare. Richard Engel, NBC News, Mariupol, Ukraine. 
Back here at home, a small trailer fire that broke out Monday turned out to be a big loss for the Bakersfield Homeless Center and the hundreds of kids they serve every year. Over 2,000 toys were lost in that blaze, many of them donated by you, our viewers, during our 17 Days of Christmas toy drive. The trailer parked next to instant mini storage off State Road in Oildale went up in flames Monday afternoon. Kern County Fire put out the flames, but five storage units were destroyed. We noticed that everything inside of our unit was pretty much decimated. Toys we utilize for birthdays, special events, we do a Christmas in July for our kids, and all of those toys, we believe, are completely demolished. If you'd like to donate toys to replace those lost, you can bring them by our studios in downtown Bakersfield or drop them off at the Bakersfield Homeless Center on East Truxton Avenue. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.